because they don't want their life to be that way. But they're in bondage. And children of God, they need liberty. And it's going to take men and women of God that goes forth in the power and the demonstration of His Spirit. Yes, the Lord uses us to deliver and to heal. There's special anointed services. But I'm talking about a power and demonstration that any time, any place, that you walk up to anyone in a condition of that state and you say, you be loosed. And they'll be loosed. That's the revival that I'm talking about. Hallelujah. That any time, any place that we have the authority in us, that we can speak it and it be so. And that's what God is trying to bring forth. But children of God, it's going to take some pressing to get there. And believe me, the more the devil sees you pressing, the more he's going to fight up against you. The more that he's going to war up against you. And a lot of people say, well, what's the use? But children of God, you are in a battle. Just like when you're on the battleground in the natural. Don't you know sometimes them soldiers think, My God, I wish I didn't have to be here. My God, I wish I could lay this weapon down and walk off. But they know that they don't have a choice. If they want to live, they have to stay alert. And they have to press beyond all measure. That's what Paul's talking about. He said, children of God, you're going to have to press. He said, get your eye upon Jesus Christ. That's the reason the Bible tells us. It's singleness of eye. We're not to look. You know the reason the Bible puts it in that statement? Because if you're looking with one eye, that means you ain't got one eye over here and you got one eye over there. That means you've got nothing but your concentration upon Jesus Christ. And that that's what your goal is. And you're not going to be happy until you reach it. Hallelujah. You know why? Children of God, I tell you what, the closer you press into God, oh my goodness, the treasures that are there. It's so worth it. You know that Jesus rewards them that diligently seek him he is a rewarder hallelujah and if you'll just press on and keep pressing against all odds God will bring you to a place that you would not even fathom in your mind hallelujah it will be just the natural course of life for you to fellowship with angels hallelujah he said, well, I know you've done gone off the deep end there. But I know I haven't. Hallelujah. Because I've experienced it myself. Hallelujah. 2007, 2008, there was many times the Lord, I knew that the Lord had caught me up. I knew what? Paul meant when he said he was caught up to the third heaven. John was caught up. Saw Michael. Saw the angels of the Lord. Sometimes he would open my eyes, my spiritual eye, and I could see them around me. And I feel them around me. And that's the reason. I keep pressing and pressing because I love him so much. And he has done so much for me. And I know that there are so many dependent upon the ministry that God has put upon in me. There's so many that are dependent upon the ministry that God has put in you the gifts and the callings that you have in your life. There is so many that's dependent. Hallelujah. 
upon you. There are souls that God has appointed us. Children of God, we need to be reaching out for them because they're going to be required of us. Now, once you get to them and you warn them, and what they decide to do on their own, then they're responsible for. What cleanses our hands is because we foretell and we warn. When we do that, and then they don't hear, then it automatically washes our hands. But the souls that we are required of, we need to pray, God, bring them to me. Lord, bring them to me. Lord, that I can get your word to them. Lord, help me be in the right place at the right time. Bring our paths together that I can witness and talk to them because I don't want their blood up on my head. You know, I was hearing Brother Wilkerson. He, he's so tore up in his spirit right now. I think every minister that's really God is opening their eyes. They are so tore up. Because they see the state of the whole of the church is in. I mean, do you know that there are churches now that have ball games? I'm talking about they have football games with teams, baseball teams, basketball teams, and they play one another. Where is that in the book of Acts? Where is that in the book of Acts? We were told to carry the gospel to all the world. He didn't go in there, go ye, go forth and play football. How is football winning souls? Children of God, the devil has blinded the eyes of the church. And you think, well, that's just all in the church world. No. I'm not saying any of the holiness churches have got football teams, but they're just as caught up in it as anybody else. You think that they would miss their favorite team playing? Oh, no. My goodness. You know, many of them probably are feeling a tug at their heart to go pray. Oh, but no, oh, they can't. Their football team's playing. It's a shame. Meeting in their houses and, and having a party, happy-go-lucky spirit. I tell you, it's stealing the power of God right out of the church. Right out of the church. I'm going to cry loud against it as long as the Lord gives me breath. It's not of God, and I don't care who does it. If I was to go off in that spirit, God, I pray that I don't. You would say, well, Sister Brenda has gone off in the spirit of error, and you would be right if I was to let myself partake of those things. But I don't. You know why? Because my eye is set upon Christ. I've got that singleness of I. You know why? Because I pray for it. Because I ask God to put it in me. You can't do these things in yourself. You have what you ask for. He said you have not because you do not ask. If you have trouble, trouble comprehending, understanding the word, you need to start praying for it. Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see my understanding. You know, there's times that we have to sit down and hear the Word of God. I don't know how much I'll get through today. I'll probably have to finish this up Wednesday night. But I want us to see how important it is to keep pressing, to keep going forward, not get in a spirit of ease, such a spirit of ease that stuck a hold of the church. I was up at 5.30-something this morning writing a message upon Facebook. I said, when I get out of church later, I said, I might not have a friend left, but I'm going to speak what God tells me to speak. Hallelujah. I, it, it tears me up. I can hardly stand it sometimes. And people beg me. I, I, I tell them, I say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, and I don't spend that much time on there. I'm on there. I try to check it throughout the day two or three times. Try to limit my time to 50, about 15 minutes. If you don't watch it, and the more friends you get, if you try to read every post, you could be on there for hours. I don't have that kind of time to put on there. I don't want to. 
I want my time to be wisely used for God. And things that I got to do in the natural. And things I got to do in the ministry. But what children of God are doing that is this truth? It tears me up. I can't hardly stand it. Where is the burden gone? I believe that's what this message is going to be titled today is where is the burden gone? I know I'm touching a little bit on this teaching. I just wanted to bring that part out. But this is a great teaching word right here that will help us to really press in. And I'll probably get in on that. But I believe the Lord is wanting us to really take a hold and see what the devil is trying to... He's sly. He's cunning. He'll bring these things upon you, and the more ease you get in your spirit, the more you pick them up, not even realize it. You know, there's ministers now that they gather in their homes and they play cards and laugh and joke and kid and care. Where is that in the Bible? I don't see it. I don't see any of the apostles having that much pleasure in the flesh. It causes the church to grow weak. It causes the church to not have the power of Christ because God's not going to bless it. And then they keep getting in their mind, well, i got to get out. i got to get out and revival. Instead of pressing toward and pulling aside, they get in revival and they run here and there and run there. How in the world can you meet the need of the people? You can't. All you're doing is going forth and having revival of the flesh. Look what that has brought forth in the past years. Destruction. Pain. People desolate. But we got to get the power of God back in to the church. And the only thing that's going to bring it back in is the Word shining a light upon it and letting the people see. Hallelujah. It breaks my heart. we got ministers of the gospel going back and forth about ball games and football games and their souls perishing every day. Souls perishing. I tell you what would wake them up is one of them it would be a lost child that would go out of this earth unsaved. Then football and card games and all that stuff wouldn't be that important, would it? But as long as it don't touch our home, we're not really that worried about it. But when God starts burning our barley fields, and I tell you what, God is going to start burning many barley fields. He's going to do whatever it takes. Just like your child, when you see it going in such a spirit of error, talking about when it's living with you and you've got rule over it. You apply whatever pressure it takes to get that child for its safety and for its welfare. To get it to walk back in line. Well, that's what God does to us. You know why? Because He loves us. He chastises us because He loves us. And if we don't get any chastisement, then we're none of His. Aren't you thankful when God chastises you? I am. Lord, thank you. But Lord, please, just don't do it in your hot displeasure. At least you consume me. Hallelujah. I tell you, I'm thankful that God Bless different ones over the holidays, too. over Thanksgiving, to be able to gather together and be able to enjoy their fellowship with one another. And I tell you, if you can, it's good to do that. Gather with your family and to eat. But keep it godly. Keep it godly. Because this is the time that God's wanting us to be a light. At all times, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, your light's never to go out. But you know, so many, their light is getting so muddy by the world that it's growing dimmer and dimmer every day. But children of God, I said, God, wake me up. Lord, don't let me get at ease. Lord, if you see I'm coming to knees, shake me, Father. 